started seeing you probably somewhere around 2011. Yes. That was before we even had a clinic. The lipo doesn't make you skinny. All injectors aren't necessarily made for for every client. In my worst fear happened. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. Me going out of the country for surgery would be really scary. But I know you guys do more. It's not for just the money. We've had a few that have had, you know, some medical emergencies there, and then it's difficult because they don't have anyone there. Yeah, my butt. <laughs> <laughs>
-hmm. that you feel kind of like steeper, you know, <laughs> than he, comparing to he. And that is why I decided I went and did the consultation with three different plastic surgeries before I decide which one I was going to go with. Did you consult any in the U.S. or did you know because of your language that you wanted to do it in Brazil? Uh, no, I didn't. I went over here one time in Foley to a, a, a doctor, Christina's doctor, but um, I wasn't very, how can I say that in a nice way, very... They, he didn't sell me because I remember it was after Cairo was born, maybe a year, I was maybe 15 pounds higher than what I am now. And he was like, you don't have to lose any weight. If you lose any weight, so you don't have any way to take any fat out of you. When in Brazil, we all know that lipo doesn't make you skinny. It's gonna take some fat where you don't, you don't wanna see it. Kind of like a, gonna contour your body, not gonna make you, like if a overweight person is doing a lipo, it's not going to be as good as somebody on a high weight doing the same thing. You know what I mean? So I didn't like to hear what she was saying because I knew I had to lose at least 10 to 15 pounds before I do my lipo. So I said, mm, I cannot trust somebody that, you know, kind of like does. I'm not going to say she doesn't know what she talks about, but maybe the culture over here is different in there. In Brazil, the doctor tells you, you have to lose at least 10 kilos before we can do a, a lipo on you. Because he say, you're not going to be happy if we do a lipo on you, you know, overweight. Just pointed out something that's really important. Like you, you vetted, you had three consultations in Brazil. You had a consultation in the U.S. And you vetted your, your practitioner that was going to do the surgery. And you found someone that matched your personality. Yes. You know, so the person that you did the consultation with may not have been like a great personality fit. And we see that a lot in our industry, you know, all injectors aren't necessarily made for, for every client. And so I think it's really important for people to know that, that like it's important for people to ask questions and to vet their provider regardless of treatment. Try different ones because um, a surgery like the one I did, it's, it's very hard and it's very important. It's something that is going to change your body forever. So you have to make sure that you are going to somebody that you can connect to some, play, some way. That's it, really important, but what both of you have said is making sure that you um, that your provider in some manner, make sure they have the, the skills, the qualifications, the safety record, et cetera, before you let them do something permanent to your body. But I believe that there's probably a misconception um, that things are cheaper and that's what drives a lot of this medical tourism or people going out of the country. And there definitely are places that people can go that, uh, you know, different countries for different procedures, that they can get things cheaper. But uh, one of the things that, that I love uh, talking to you about and that, that we are kind of on the same page, you didn't choose it just because it was cheaper. Maybe you had some, uh, you know. Power advantage. A little bit of advantage there, but that wasn't your uh, motivating factor. It wasn't like you're only going because it was cheaper, because if you, you wanted to find somebody that you trusted, that you knew had a good safety record, but if you would have found that person here in the U.S. and felt comfortable with them, you would have also paid the money and been here. Yes. Because I believe that there are some um, other hidden costs and uh, other things that people Flight. may not consider your, yeah. You know, staying. I had my family over there, so it's easy for me. My cousins, they came to take care of me because it, the abdominoplasty is not kind of like a C-section. It's hard because it's open you from one side to another one. So it's a hard surgery. And I did everything at once. I did the lipo, the abdominoplasty, and the breast. So it was kind of like tough for two weeks. What does a pre-op look like for your workup? Did you have to make a trip ahead of time or were they able well, to? Well, I did online. I, I like kind of like in August, I did my consultation online. In, the, in December when I got there, I had to go see him. I had to go do a blood test to see if everything was okay. I had to go see a cardi cardiologist so he can give me okay. And then I had to do two ultrasounds one for my breast and one for my abdominal, maybe you can help me with that one, abdominal. Abdominal wall or something. Walls, like, yes. Mm. 
to see. Make sure the muscles were not Yeah, weak. because he, he want to see if I had a diastasis. Diastasis. Mm -hmm. Yes, because my I had two babies. So he can close that out. And then if you didn't have family and you weren't going to stay over there, like for someone just interested in maybe uh, g going out of the country for this, uh, what would that look like in terms of their recovery? Do they have to stay up like two weeks, a month? Uh, do you know? I stay six weeks, but it because it kind of was um, the end of the year, I wanted my kids to experience uh, Christmas over there because it's summertime, it's totally different than here. Santa's gonna be in shorts. So I decided to stay longer there, but I believe if you do something like this, you have to stay in two weeks, he can let you go. So if you feel comfortable to come back, it's probably two weeks you have to stay there. Chris may be about to ask this, but did you stay like in a one of the apartments or anything for aftercare? Or did you go directly home after? No, your... I went to we went. I went to the hospital and after I sleep in the hospital. And the next day, I went direct to my. I have a condo over there in Brazil, and I stayed there with my family, my mom cooking. <laughs> oh, that, that always makes you feel better. Yes. <laughs> Mom's cooking is worth going out of the country for surgery, right? <laughs> I'm going to go over there and have something just so your mom can cook for me, I tell right? you guys to go all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not for surgery, yeah. but... Just to go. Yeah, just yeah. to go. Yeah, I think for, for me, going out of the country for surgery would be really scary because of the language barrier. Uh, uh, so for the same thing, you know, you said this, it's, if it's your primary language, you understand things at a little bit deeper depth, even than someone translating for you. It's, it's like if you don't understand that or you're in an environment where everyone's speaking, I think that would be really difficult. And I'm really respectful of that all the time when we have patients in the hospital that English is not their primary language. I'm like, it has to be very scary for them when they're hearing all these conversations and it's not in a language that's their primary language. Yes. We traveled recently and did a cruise and have been in some areas that were so different from our culture. And I think that one of the places that we recently went was Turkey. And I felt myself a little uncomfortable just because the culture was so different than what I was, I was used to. And so going to an area like that, which he's ready to go to Turkey to get teeth, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's ready to plan a trip back. I think the, that culture being so different than mine would have made, if I went there for a treatment, it would have impeded my recovery process just because of my comfort level. And so I can completely see where being like, that's home. Yes. like for you, you know. In Brazil, a lot of the doctors, they come over here to do master degree or technology things. They still looking over here. America is still being the best for a lot of technologies. So a lot of them speak English mm -hmm. because it, when Timothy went with me in 2017, the doctor that he went for his gastro he spoke English very well. So a lot of these doctors now English is primary oh, everywhere yeah I think that <laughs> I think uh, it's different than I think Portuguese. we're the only ones that only speak one language well, like so many other countries will speak <laughs> yeah if I'm going in a hospital over here everybody's going to be speaking English nobody's going to speak Portuguese but over there maybe to the nurse or the doctor they're going to know English they're going to talk to you you know oh yeah I say all the time I wish the the we would have learned another language. We had minimal Spanish, you know, in high school, but we were the one of the, I think, few uh, cultures that only learn really one language primarily. So that's a, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, because my sister, she's living in Europe right now. My nieces, they go to school in Portugal. And in Portugal, they learn English, French, um, French, and another language. I was like impressed about that. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, the, so you definitely um, have had an overall very positive experience, and we wanted to make sure on the podcast that we kind of covered things balanced uh, because we also have a fair share of people who have had some negative experience um, with other procedures. I think you did it the right way in making sure that you researched everything before you went, <laughs> getting a good facility, a good provider with a safe track record. You didn't just pick the first one no. or the cheapest. I feel like a lot of people now, like they're 
the way that they find these surgeons, the U.S. and out of the country, is social media. Yes. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that, you know, patients come in and say, do you follow Dr. X, Y, or Z that's doing great lipo? And it may be someone in Brazil or... Well, you know. uh, when I, yeah, I ask some friends from college, you know, I ask them, they work in a medical field. I'm like, who do you think it's good? And they gave me three names and... I did the one consultation one one when I was in Brazil in July of 22, mm -hmm. and another one online in August. And the third one I did online too over here, and it was hard to to make a decision. Yeah. Because each one they have their own technique. They have some that uh, he doesn't like to do everything at once because he thinks doesn't gonna have enough time for that. They don't want to leave you under anesthesia for very long because of safety, so um, it was hard because for me, I wanted to do everything I wanted to because it, I want to take advantage because I'm, I didn't know when I'm, I was going to go back to Brazil to do it something. So it was kind of hard to make the decision. Do, you, do I do two procedures or one or three? So, but I finally, I was happy. With the one was I there chose. anything that you experienced, either either something really positive or really negative, that you didn't anticipate? I did because if, um, I I research a lot about abnoplasty, and it's kind of fun. The first doctor that I went, he told me that I didn't need it. He said I didn't have enough skin. The, my kind of skin, he said, is it's it's kind of like tough, and I don't know. He said that he could not pull to where my C-section was. That was my thing. If I'm going to do, I want to I wanna have only one scar. But I never, uh, I had a friend that did before and they look great, but I saw the scar after 10 years is different scar than if you see the scar today. And if I see the same scar 10 years from now, it's going to be different. So I didn't have an idea of how that would look on me. And that was a little scary. And another thing that I was scary was not having a double scar. If my skin didn't go to pull, I'm going to have a double scar, my C-section and that. And my worst fear happened, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Because the doctor that I chose, he said, no, we can do it, we can pull. I'm like, okay, do, I'm going to have a double scan. He no necessary. I'm like, okay, so let's do it. And I end up with double scar. And that made me a little sad. And I got a little, my out steam was a little down, my self steam and everything. Because I'm like, I ask him, do I really need it? Am I going to be with this? And he said, no. But things happen. And he said, there's some, I'm sorry. When I saw over there, I could not do anything. If I pulled too much, you we could, you would have other, uh, the skull would be so ugly, you would have other complications that I didn't want it to. What are we going to do is kind of like in one year or so, we're going to redo this. Because then he said, we don't have to do, to cut, to cut the, the, as deep as abnoplasty is going to be just kind of like the skin superficial to meet my C-section. So it's going to be one in December. I talked to him recently and he said I can go and do it any day. But now I can't yeah. Yeah. because of work, the kids. So probably it's going to be in June or July next year is when I'm going. But like he was very very like upset about it because he, he didn't know that was going to happen. He really thought I had the skin to pull, but I didn't. Yeah. And I think that's something that we can really run into anywhere, right? I mean, if, if you do medical procedures, there's risk associated with them. And that that's going to be whether you do things in the U.S. or out of the country. Uh, we both had procedures and uh, all of our procedures have been in, in the U.S. And um, had some unforeseen things occur with our procedures as well. And so I think that that can occur it can wherever happen you with are. anybody, yeah. The 
thing kind of to take from all of this, and you said it like as one of the first things that you started talking about when we started this was that you did it for your confidence and to make you feel yes. better. And you actually made that comment regarding Botox about how much better you felt when you got your toxin. And so I think the the message from all of this and every episode of the Beauty and the Brain that we do is that all of these things are to make us feel better for ourselves, you know. And when you when you look good, you feel good. Like I I truly believe that. And you know, it's one of those things. Like if you get up and you get dressed for the day, then you feel a lot better than if you just lay around in PJs all day. And I feel like so. also people can see your energy from how you feel. If I feel good, I feel like you're gonna say, "Oh, let's look so beautiful." But sometimes you are not beautiful. It's just the, your energy, and you are good with yourself, and that makes people see you inside. Right. And I really like it. But I, I like it. Uh, they. Everybody has to find a professional that you guys trust. Because it, this is one thing that I know about you guys. I trust you guys blindly. <laughs> I can be because I know if I'm going to do... Sometimes I ask you, do I need fillers? You're like, no, you don't. So you guys are sincere. I feel like I know everybody, all the professionals doing business for the money. But I know you guys do more it's not for just the money. You guys do because you guys like, you want to make us feel good. So I love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, and we, I mean, we, we love our patients, especially the ones we've seen over a long period of time because they know that we'll, we'll talk them out of things way more than we yeah. talk them into it because we don't want them to be overdone. We like to be natural. Yeah. And definitely, um, we've got to know you over a long period of time. So you, you kind of build that trust two ways. Are you planning any surgeries in the future? Well, I want to try to fix it, this, yeah. you know, when, once I'm going to be under the knife again. So I felt like I have a little fat of <laughs> a little fat of me. <laughs> that I'm like, well, I might as well, I'm going to be there. You're going to be sleeping. there, go ahead. So go ahead and do it. <laughs> so I'm thinking about what is trained over there right now. It's a, a lipo, a 360 lipo that they are doing. And I talked to this doctor that she said that she actually, because she said some pe some doctors, they lay you in, in bed, but I don't do that way. She actually put you like sideways and she lie on your side and then the other side and then your back. And she can even, um, uh, like, you, uh, like you said, they get the fat out of it and shirt in something else. So if you have, I do have a little dip over here on the side of my, what do you call it? On the side of your, your butt? Yeah, my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, can, they can insert that yeah. in the, the fat over there, so it makes you a little more round. They are kind of like have this new peach butt or whatever that is in trendy. So I think I will in June or July when I go to Brazil. Since I'm going to have to do this, I'm going to do it. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> Do it while I'm down. Yeah. A few things that, that I kind of want to just end on or make sure that we touch on so people don't just think this is easy. <laughs> Let's just go out of the country and get it. Um, it is basically to reiterate that uh, what we've already discussed about your provider, make sure that they have a good safety record and do you understand what the post-procedure uh, care is gonna be like. Because if you don't have family or you don't speak the primary language, uh, it can be scary if you don't have somebody there with you. Um, you know, we also hear stories of people who have kind of went, um, it's a kind of trendy with people in this area right now to go over the um, border for gastric bypass surgeries. Yeah. Um, and we've had a few that have had, you know, some medical emergencies there. And then it's difficult because they don't have anyone there yes. to talk for them, to be their advocate. They're kind of, you know, having complications in a post-op period where they're not thinking clearly and they've had to get themselves back to the U.S. So you want to make sure that you kind of think through all of those scenarios, not just everything that goes good. You want to know what goes, 
when something goes wrong, how are you going to be taken care of? And so, you know, Ursula's from Brazil, has a great family there, a support it's system great. there. It's her primary yeah. language, was in a good healthcare system. So there was all those stops in place. But for people who think it's just easy and they're going to hop on a plane and go have a major procedure, they need to think through all those steps and not just about and the, the recovery period. And the recovery, not just the dollars they're going to. Yeah. In the recovery, like it, 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 it is hard. The doctors, they say, oh, it's just two, you can go back to work. In two weeks, I heard doctors over here saying, no, you can't. Because first you have a drain that you have to keep it for at least nine days. And then you feel very weak. So I had to take even higher um, pills because it, it, it makes you feel weak. It's a, it's a, it's a very big surgery. Mm -hmm you have to have some help. So that is why I don't think over here I would be able to do it. Yeah. Just because it's opposite from help. you than a lot of people that's asking to go there because you don't have as much help here as you did there. But you know, we have patients that, that really want to go for a weekend and have a procedure by themselves and come right back. And I'm like, yeah, it's not quite that easy. There's a lot of things besides just the safety and researching the doctor. You've got to think about all those other you can't get back on a plane for a long flight right afterwards. I can't imagine some of the people that are going down now for you know like the the, the butt lifts, the BBLs, where they're getting and they can't even sit on the plane because of the fat. And I'm like, that's got to be be miserable. Um, so yeah, research all of those things and not just the dollar. So you know we do have a lot of. Um, I, I think the key is is really finding a provider that you can vet, make sure they're safe, and see their record. Because even though you may not have a good initial experience, you can find other ones here. Um, you know, check your vet your providers thoroughly in the U.S. or abroad, either place. I think yes. is the key. Yes, yes, and be comfortable with the person that you are with. Yeah, because there's definitely you know, like I said, we both had surgical procedures and. Um, for sure, we, we kind of vet the providers and there's some that we just don't really click with and they're, they're good for other people. They're, yes. they're fine for yes. someone, um, you know, it's just like in aesthetics, we have patients that um, love to see us and patients that go to see other injectors in the area. Also, we are all different and unique. My skin's totally different than yours. We don't know from yours how it's gonna, so it, it, everybody's un unique. Maybe the doctor, did this to me, but for other people, other person, it was a beautiful surgery. So, but I still like him. He has a great personality. He's well, very, you look great. And you look yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> and there's lots of ways we can revise scars. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks so much again for being here with us today. Thank we, you, my pleasure. We hope you guys have all enjoyed this episode and we look forward to seeing you again next week on another episode of Beauty in the Brain. See you soon.